Hi, this is Doug Standard with the Leaders Institute. Hey, just a real quick thing. For the last, really, almost two decades, I've been doing leadership training and coaching, especially personal success kind of coaching and leadership training for, for individuals from, you know, all the way from middle managers all the way up to high-level executives. And one of the things I've kind of figured out, figured out over the years, and actually very early on, was that a lot of the things that we do in our lives to try to make us make ourselves more successful don't necessarily lead to that success. In fact, when I first started teaching leadership training back in about 1994, I guess is probably the first class that I that, that I actually taught or the first time I ever coached folks. I, I started out the class by asking a single question that I've continued to ask in every single leadership training session that I've done over the past two decades. And that single question was, what makes people successful? And I, and I would usually ask the question something like this. I would say, think about somebody who you know personally, hopefully, somebody, somebody that you feel is successful, however you measure success, whether that's financially or spiritually or whatever way that you measure success, think about that person who's really successful and then write down, you know, two, three, four, five characteristics that that person possesses that maybe people who aren't as successful kind of lack, right? And just to kind of see what people would write down. What's interesting was that uh, what we I, every in every one of those classes, I'd make a list up on a whiteboard or a flip chart, something like that. And what we kind of figured out over the years is that most of the stuff that people identify as being successful traits tend to be more attitudes than anything else. And then second to attitudes is what we call skills. Uh, very little of a person's success really depends on what they know, which kind of goes against conventional wisdom. Most of the time we're taught all our lives, go to school, get a degree, the more degrees you get, the more successful you'll be, right? But it's really not until you take that information from the classroom out into the real world and actually do something with it that you actually become more successful. So, like for instance, they, uh, they, they basically tell us, psychologists will tell us that we're trainable in, in three different areas. We're trainable in knowledge, which is all the technical information, information high school, college, on-the-job training, all that kind of stuff. Uh, also skills, basically how we take that information and put it into practice and do something with it. And then finally, the last area that we're trainable in is, is attitude. Basically, not, and not necessarily just the attitude we have about ourselves and other people, but more importantly how we control that attitude, keep that attitude more positive on a consistent basis. And what I figured out doing this, this, um, this little survey, mini survey over the years is that most of the things that people attribute to, to successful behaviors are those attitudes. Things like Integrity is always real big, diligence, persistence, work ethic, any of those kind of things that kind of come up that are, that are more attitude. And a lot of times it's you know, positive attitude and that kind of thing as well. In fact, there's motivational speakers that spent the last you know, two, three, four decades or so making a lot of money teaching people that attitude is everything. You know, they, uh, in fact, there's a lot, been a lot of books written about how if you just control your attitude, you're going to be more successful. In reality, that's, that's important. You have to keep your attitude on a positive on a consistent basis, but attitude is very temporary. I'll give you an example. Let's say, for instance, that uh, you wake up in the morning. It's a perfect morning. I mean, the sun is shining. It's a perfect 71 degrees outside. Uh, the moment that you wake up, your significant other comes to you with a tray of breakfast. It's your favorite breakfast too. It sets it, lets it, sets it on you, or it sets it on your lap, and you and you eat your favorite breakfast. It's really awesome, right? So you go, you go, and you, have, you get, you get, get in the shower, have a nice shower, and everything. You go, get, go get in your car, and all the way to your office, there's no traffic anywhere. I mean, you, it's, you get to the office in record time. You walk in, everybody greets you with a warm smile. It's just, I mean, this is like a perfect morning. You get to your office, right? And all of a sudden, you, you look at your, uh, your, uh, your phone, and it's, got, it's one of those old-timey phones with the red blinking light on it, right? The red blinking light that tells you you've got a voicemail. You go, oh, great, somebody loved me enough to leave a voicemail, right? And you kind of click on your, your office voicemail. Now, granted, you've been at home, you know, so you've had your cell phone and everything. Nobody's called you on it, but the office phone is, um, is blinking, and you, and you call in, and it says you have 142 voicemail messages, right? Now, the whole time that you're on your way to the office, all the way to the time that you get to your desk, your attitude's probably pretty good. Once you hear that 142 voicemail messages, you know that nobody's going to leave you that many voicemail messages and something to, unless something is really, really, really wrong. So all of a sudden, our attitude starts to, to tank a little bit, right? The reason why is because our attitude a lot of times depends on circumstances. But one of the cool things that we've kind of figured out in doing a lot of leadership training is that the more skilled you are at dealing with adversal, adversarial type situations, the easier it is to control your attitude and keep your attitude more, pos more positive on a consistent basis. So like for instance, 
Uh, a lot of the skills that we focus on in leadership training are things like communication skills, people skills, leadership skills, how to motivate and inspire other people, how to resolve conflicts, how to deal with people more, more effectively because the better we are at dealing with people, the, the more successful we kind of become, right? So like for instance, if somebody has really, really good people skills and they're able to motivate and inspire people, the, the folks around them will typically describe that person as being as, as having great attitudes, things like charisma, right? So if you have good people skills, it leads to good uh, people describing you as being charismatic, right? If you have good people skills, you'll be described as being uh, being positive, right? If you're if you have good time management skills, people will describe you as being diligent and persistent and having a good work ethic, right? So the more we focus on the skill sets, the more the attitudes kind of come. So what we've kind of so what uh, what basically this survey has shown after doing this for years and years and years and years is that about 80% of a person's success really depends on their skills and their attitude, and actually very little depends on on what they know. I mean, you have to have that, by the way. You have to have the knowledge because that's the ticket to get in the game. You know, a lot of times you might have to have a degree in order to get a, a, a good job. But once you get the degree, that's just the starting point, right? You have to be able to do something with it in order to in order to be successful. One of the things I hear most often when I'm when I'm kind of coaching people is folks will get really upset and they'll say, God, I know way more than my boss. Hey, my boss is a jerk. My boss is an idiot. I know way more. And I always look at them and go, duh. <laughs> you know, that's why that person's the boss, right? Uh, for instance, you know, I know there are some, some exceptions, you know, where the boss knows more than the people that work for me. I'm, I'm a great exception myself, right? Not really. But actually, one of the things that, that makes my company so successful is that I'm a really good salesperson. I've done sales in my life, but I actually surround myself on, you know, with folks on my sales staff that are much, much better at sales than I am, right? Uh, I have a, I am a great teacher. I think, I think I'm a pretty good speaker. I'm a pretty good motivator. I'm a pretty good, uh, pretty good at, at helping people create behavior change, that kind of thing. But I also have folks that that work for my company that are way better at that than than I am. Uh, I have my own expertise, and I have folks around me. I'm surrounded myself with other people that have totally different expertises than, than what I do, right? And that's what really makes our, our company successful. And that's what make the, makes the company that you work for successful as well. The more, uh, uh, the, the more skill sets that you have around, with, within the people that are working around you and working for you, the more successful we kind of become. So uh, I get, let me give you an example of how all this works in, in reality. So basically, those, those three areas of training that I mentioned before, knowledge, skill, and attitude, most people spend 90 plus percent of their time, their formal um, um, uh, education process, trying to get knowledge. You know, if you want to be more successful, go read another book. You want to be successful, go to another seminar. You want to be more successful, go back and get another degree, right? When in reality, it's not until we actually do something with that that, that that we actually become more successful. So if we focus more on developing those skill sets, we become more successful much, much more quickly. I'll give you an example of this in real life. Let's say, for instance, that you wanted to learn how to fly an airplane, for instance, right? Well, you could do the, the, the traditional education route to learn to fly an airplane, which is what most, you know, most people would do in the business world anyway. And in, in doing that, you might, uh, let's, say, let's say you go to a ground school for like 10 hours a day for 30 days. So at the end of the 30th day, you're going to have about 300 hours worth of knowledge about how to fly an airplane. You'll know all the weather, you know, how to do navigation and weather patterns and, you know, how the lift works and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you won't have any practical experience actually flying the plane. At the end of the 30th day, we take you down to the airfield, we get you strapped in a plane, get you go good and stung in the seatbelt, and just starts to, we turn the engine on, the propeller will spin, you know, the plane's vibrating just a little bit, and then the instructor shuts the door, turns around and walks away. What do you think your attitude's going to be about taking that plane off the ground, right? I mean, even though you've 300 hours worth of knowledge, is more knowledge than most private pilots have about flying an airplane, right? Uh, but, but in reality, without the skill set, without the, without the practice, you, it's, it's going to be very difficult to overcome that, that negative um, attitude that you have, right? Now let's take a different route. Instead of spending 10 hours a day for 30 days in the classroom, what would happen if we if we spent maybe you know 10, 15, 20 minutes in the ground on, in the ground school, and then spend the a remaining 30 minutes actually up in the air flying in, the, in the airplane? This time, after you after uh, instead of spending you know 10 hours a day, you might spend I don't know an hour every other day doing that. So at the end of the 30th day, you're going to have 15 hours worth of practical flight time. Right? 
And really, after about the first five or six hours, you're probably doing everything yourself anyway. You're going to take down some landings in terms of stalls. The instructor, the flight instructor is there in, in case something goes wrong, in case there's a, there's a problem, right? At the end of the 30th day, you've taken that plane up and down, what, 15 times or so? In the last you know, five or six times, you've done it entirely by yourself under the, the, the uh, guidance of the, of the flight instructor. Well, at the end of the 30th day, the flight instructor looks at you and he, said, hey, and he says, I've trained over 200 pilots, and you're as good as any of them I've ever trained. Go ahead and land the plane. You take the plane down one more time. You've done that over and over and over again. And then he shuts the door, turns around, and walks away. What do you think your attitude's going to be this time, right? So even though you've got less ground school, you're actually more confident in being able to do it. Now, you're probably going to be nervous. I mean, this is the very first time by yourself, right? But probably not so nervous that you're not going to give it a try, right? And after you, you know, after you take the airplane up, you circle around the airfield a couple times, come down for a nice soft landing all by yourself, all of a sudden your attitude shh, man, shoots through the roof, right? That's what good training will do for you. That's what good um, process building and, and skill development will actually do to your, for your confidence and do for your attitude. So, so Norman Vincent Peel and some of the other motivational speakers are, are kind of right in that attitude is everything, but the thing that you want to keep in mind is that your attitude depends a lot on the skills that you've developed. You work on those skills and your attitude will come with it, right? So basically, you want to be successful, I'm not saying stay away from knowledge because you have to continually grow in knowledge, right? But in addition to the knowledge, you also have to be able to do something with that knowledge. Put some skills in there, and once you develop your skills, you'll be well-rounded and become much, much, much more successful.